shall fight on beaches. We shall fight on the landing grounds. We shall never surrender. We shall never surrender. We shall never surrender. You know, Christopher Nolan is getting better and better and better with these IMAX cameras. He's a beast behind the camera with those things. And now he's telling the true story of Dunkirk, of how 400,000 men were trapped on a beach trying to survive. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. All right, what's up, guys? So here is my review for Dunkirk. I've been looking forward to this movie for quite some time. It's being written and directed by Chris Nolan. He's one of my favorite directors. Uh, he's probably one of the best directors out there in the game, arguably. He, he's been doing it, doing this for quite some time. Always been holding it down. I have nearly every film in, um, in my collection that he's been a part of. I got Memento that came out in 2010. Uh, he also had a film called Insomnia, which came out in 2002, which I don't have. Of course, I have Batman Begins, uh, one of my favorite comic book movies that came out in 2005 on Blu-ray. Then I got The Prestige on DVD that came out in 2006. This is probably one of my favorite Christopher Nolan films. I don't, I can't find anything wrong with here. 2008's The Dark Knight. And then we got 2010's uh, Inception. Great movie right here. Probably the worst movie and his uh, filmography is The Dark Knight Rises. And that's saying a lot because, I mean, this was still good. It wasn't as good as Batman Begins or The Dark Knight. But, you know, this is his worst movie. And if The Dark Knight Rises is your worst movie, that just goes to show how talented of a director you really are. And then I have 2014's Interstellar. And this was much better on the second, third and fourth viewing. And when Dunkirk comes out, um, I will be getting that in my collection as well. But if you don't know already, Dunkirk is about the true story of in May of 1940 during World War II, where the British, Belgium, Dutch and uh, the French armies were, you know, fighting the Germans and they got trapped on the beach at Dunkirk. And they're just waiting to die, basically, or, you know, just trying to get rescued and they have no hope. And uh, Chris Van Olen decided to uh, tackle that. I'm really glad he did because he puts a lot of passion in his work and he did here as well, especially with it being a true story. You know, I'm pretty sure that this movie is going to be pulling on a lot of heartstrings and, um, you know, from a lot of people around the world. Another great thing that I'm glad that he did this movie is because, like I said in my intro, he, he is really good with the IMAX cameras. I mean, 80 to 85 percent of this whole movie has been shot with IMAX cameras. Um, I saw I could have saw this on Tuesday. But I did want to wait to Thursday night because the screening that they had this said it was a fake IMAX screen. It wasn't a real one. And I, I'm not cool with the IMAX. I like the real IMAX, the real 70 millimeter um, uh, display. The, the, you know, the screen is just so large and tall. And so I really wanted to see, you know, how great he did with the IMAX cameras. And he did a great job. Uh, you know, probably one of the best things in, in the whole movie is, you know, anytime you're trying to portray war, you want to, you know, show how serious it is and, you know, just how daunting it can be and, you know, how it can, you know, mess you up physically and mentally. And what better way to do that with IMAX cameras with the great resolution. So during the movie, I really like seeing all the dog fights, you know, in the air with the fighter planes. And I was about to say jets, but with the fighter planes flying around, that was pretty intense there. I do have a gripe about that, but I'll, I'll talk about that later. But about the movie itself, continuing on, what I liked about and I kind of have a pro and a con with how it started off because it just starts and you're just right there in the midst of it, just in the middle of battle. There is no build up. You're following one character and people are just getting shot dead, you know, immediately, you know, trying to escape. And then that's that's great. You know, it gets you, you know, at the edge of your seat and you're like, man, what's going on? And you, you're just trying to get to know these characters and trying to find yourself in the situation just to kind of see where everything is. And so he did a, a, a really good job there. Um, something else that I really liked about the movie was the score by Hans Zimmer. Hans Zimmer always does the scores for Christopher Nolan, and it's like the pe perfect marriage between the two. I mean, Hans Zimmer is, you know, you know, probably the top three uh, best composers out there in the game right now. So he did a great job with the score. So I really like that. He also did uh, Christopher Nolan also did a great job uh, with the IMAX cameras. I really do. I really did appreciate that. 
And with this being a true story, the most important thing that Christopher Nolan should have been able to do, and he did a great job with, is just kind of just show you the emotions and the pain and the fear that all these soldiers were going through. I mean, this really just sucked. I mean, you mean you had some soldiers just kind of, you know, they're on the beach like with nowhere to go. Um, they can't go back inland because there's nothing but big guns and tanks waiting to blow them away. And then they're just at the beach getting picked off by fighter, you know, jets and making circles in the sky. And anytime, you know, a uh, big, um, uh, destroyer boats try to come through, you know, they're either bombed and, you know, they have allies that are, you know, mile, many, many miles away, but they don't want to send in the, uh, destroyers to all of them to rescue them because, you know, they don't want to waste those resources for any future battles. So they're just stuck there on this beach with no hope, you know, waiting to die. And that is I can't even come remotely close to, um, you know, putting myself in that situation and imagine that. And Chris Van Nolan really did uh, do a great job of showing, you know, um, you know, the pain that these soldiers were going through, whether they were actually, you know, ducking and dodging from bullets and bombs, swimming for their lives, or just in a quiet moment, just sitting there on the beach just saying, I mean, man, I might as well blow my head off right now because it's inevitable. I'm going to die. I mean, some soldiers did that. They would just, you know, walk into the ocean or whatever with no care in the world and nobody would stop them because it really just seemed like, you know, there was no hope. So, I mean, you know, portraying that within the soldiers was really good. I really could feel the pain and the intensity in each of the scenes, especially with the score from Hans Zimmer. And Chris Van Olen always does with all these films. He's really good with his montages, especially at the very end of every movie that he has. He always have three to four to five scenes bouncing back and forth with this riveting score just to ramp up everything. He didn't do that at the end of this movie. He did it a number of times throughout the movie i mean it was one scene where it was a bunch of regular guys just trying to load the boat with uh life uh, with life vest or whatever but for some reason that was intense or whatever and chris van olin and hans zimmer they're able to do that which does make the movie a lot better something that i you know a, a gripe that i do have about the movie is um that during the dialogue, sometimes it was kind of difficult to understand what everyone was saying. You know, I, I had to struggle sometimes to make out the words. And there was a lot of quiet moments, and you know, which is fine. But there were too many quiet moments to where I wish someone would explain to me exactly what's going on. Because they did later on, like towards the middle of the film and kind of towards the beginning of, I guess, the third act. But there was a large portion of the film towards the beginning and kind of the middle to where I was kind of lost as far as the whole geography of where everything was, how large the beach the beach was. And, you know, I mean, this, this is a... 400,000 soldiers so I mean of course you're not going to hire 400,000 extras but at the same time you know sometime when this party was over here and this party was over here and over here and over here it was just kind of scattered and I did not really know the objective other than you know people are trying to get rescued off the beach I mean where where are the where are the allies coming from the rescuers and where are they trying to take them that really wasn't clear early on um, to me and that was a little bit frustrating also, with the dogfights, some of them, um, you know, I believe Tom Hardy was one of the characters, but, you know, some of them, when they're in the plane, they have a mask on. So early on, it was kind of hard to kind of make out each one and decipher who is who because you all you could see are their eyes. But, you know, that wasn't a problem, um, you know, later on in the film. Any other gripes that I have um, besides the G? I mean, other than some, the, you know, the not having a. The, well, and I, I said it because at one part in the film, towards the beginning, they had some subtitles and they would show like a boat and they would say like one day and they would show like a plane that would show like one hour. So I was assuming that that is the ETA of those vehicles and how long it will be before they can get to Dunkirk. But they didn't line up with the timeline. So sometimes the passage of time was a little sloppy as well. But, you know, overall, I really did enjoy the movie. Um, it, it was intense. The IMAX scenes are great. I really, which was pretty much the whole movie. It looked great. Even scenes where they're just sitting on the beast look great. IMAX look great. The dog fights look great. Seeing the soldiers just trying to survive and make it and get home. That was great. Seeing some of the soldiers you know, like Cillian Murphy lose their mind, you know, because they're shell shocked 
or, you know, or whatever, because they just are in the middle of war. You know, I liked all that. And some of them just made some horrible decisions, but you can't blame them given their situation. And I, yes, this is a true story, but I do like the way that Christopher Nolan wrote and directed the actors to con convey um, that point. So great IMAX, uh, great characters, great intensity, great score. Um, it was a little sloppy with the geography at times and the dialogue was a little bit hard to make out of times. But overall, I really did enjoy the film. If I had to rate this out of a one out of 10, I would give it an 8.5 out of 10. Yes, an 8.5 out of 10. But guys, that is just my opinion. What did you think of the new Dunkirk movie? Have you seen it? Do you want to see it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. And if you like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And if you don't like the video, that's perfectly fine. Just leave me a comment below why and still give me a thumbs up. Since you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can get all the content that I have to provide. You can just click that subscribe button also click the bell so you can get notified when i do uploads you can go to my website check me out there all my written reviews and bookmark it and also look me up on social media and right now guys we're in the middle of the start of uh, comic-con 2017 uh, san diego uh, and i just cannot wait especially for saturday when we have the dc uh, warner brothers and marvel disney panel the most thing i'm looking forward to is black panther i can't wait for that movie to come out next year and i would love to be on the red carpet and you can help me get in there by sharing this video 1000 times it's a long shot yeah but i'm going for it so because i love black panther i love marvel i love comics i'm a black guy and i and that movie comes out in black history month so i mean it would just be an epic dream come true for me if i can be on the red carpet or on the side with the fans either or i would be a happy camper but guys i just want to thank you again for tuning in for my opinion slash review for Dunkirk by written and directed by Christopher Nolan. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery. And that's just my opinion. Peace.